So I'm gonna start off with uh, immigrants that come and um, yeah. When you're an immigrant on the cusp of being American, meaning you came to America early enough, you end up knowing more about here than there, but late enough that the government treats you differently than your classmates, you come to realize your issues and theirs are not the same. Not getting asked to the homecoming dance is not as scary as your family being gone when you come home on the day of the homecoming dance. And if you knew me, you would be asking, why are you worrying so much? You're not a criminal and your family is so nice all the time. American naiveness, still thinking people in uniforms would notice or care about the difference. In a time where television shapes your outlook, I wish there was a TV sitcom about immigrants, a coming of age TV sitcom episode where the 15 year old learns they cannot get a license or a job or travel abroad after taking French at school and planning their trip with their friends. How will they deal with it? Stay tuned for the next episode. Or like a Mother's Day episode where a Latina woman is asking her six year old son what kind of snacks he wants. And suddenly a white woman approaches her with foam in her mouth, screaming at her, go back to your country. Nobody wants you here, speak English. Then it cuts to the mother putting her child to sleep by giving them a kiss on the forehead, walking to the kitchen and then silently crying under the one single light bulb. Maybe then America will not look away and finally say, aw, along with the live studio audience, or maybe a lighter take on the immigrant experience, like when 14 year old Brenda starts working in the same factory her mom works during the summer instead of taking the sun by the pool. But it's not so bad because during lunchtime she sits with the other underage kids working under illegal names. Maybe the audience will want to rewatch them over and over and over like they do with friends. Maybe it would even be on Disney. Then our children will be children, not baggage, not dirty criminals, not drug dealers. Since people are so tired of the news because it makes them so sad, I think going with the Disney vibe would be so refreshing, right? Maybe you will get more than one season. In season two, maybe the main characters deal with not being an all straight A student or valedictorian, but still feels like he matters to this country. In season three, the immigrant parents go to therapy and heal all the hurt they have inside. In season four, if we get confirmed for it, it would be cool to see immigrants that it would be cool to see the immigrant protagonist cry from happiness for once, not out of relief because the worst didn't happen, just pure joy. It could be a great plot twist. I think we should see immigrant experiences on TV screens with lines and plots for people to understand we are robbing generations of their childhood. How will kids deal with normal teenager problems when their moms, dads, daughters, sons, and neighbors are being mistreated, being abused, tormented and separated without warning, without pity. A theme song will play where a nearly bald white man in a classic dark blue suit cuts the umbilical cord and throws it across the border and says, go fetch. Um, and then my next one, it's called Drunk Text um, because I think drunk texts are romantic, I think, maybe. I, I want to be your drunk text, feeling so bold to reach out only when you're not yourself, feeling vulnerable enough to feel stupid, take consequences, pride, anger out of your right pocket. There's a smile on my face as if you were in front of me again since the last time I saw you. Digital romance, 21st century heartbreak. You're so drunk yet text so perfectly. You're so drunk yet conscious enough to miss me to be your 3 a.m. text. Thank you. The only hour you feel nostalgic of a day that was more exciting than today. So comfortable yet not. To choose to think of someone when you have someone else already. 3 a.m. I only want to sleep if you'll be there. Not 3 a.m. I'm horny, you up text. 3 a.m. Hey, have you been? I know you get those nights too. But most importantly, I want to be your call. The one, your fingers, and every part of you part of you, bones, cells, and organs, they all tell you you're wrong, except for the heart. And it rings, and it rings, and it rings. Um, and then this one is called Voices in Our Head. Um, and it's just like about like 
being part of different communities and having different identities and like how that affects your thought process. I have so many voices in my head, not just a little devil or a little angel. For example, currently, I don't want to go to college when my immigrant voice tells me your parents have given up so much just for that. My American voice responds, I didn't ask them to and continues, I wish I wasn't in this country. Like returning a gift because you don't like it. My American voice seeing the disappointed look on my mother's face then selfishly looking away. My immigrant voice seeing the look on, in a flashback years later at random, seeing the disillusion on my mother's face, her hurting, so used to silently pulling back tears. And when it comes to winning, my own voice says, enjoy the victory. My immigrant voice says, maybe ask for more. Don't ask, just take. American voice response. I am so lost. I know how things should be done, but I see how others do them. I end up doing nothing. I don't know who to listen to, and that's why I can't take others' advice. Advice is so necessary. Where others lack multiple voices in their head, I have too many, yet feel the same way. The other day, my American friend was giving me advice on my issues of being a firstborn Mexican American, or however it is said on the news. My white friend doesn't even know Univision. She wouldn't even know how to pronounce the word right if I were to show her. My white friend asks, how can you love your mother when she treats you like that? Like that, being too big of a picture for words, like that, being too complicated to be considered love, like that, being enough sometimes from where I come from. I always wondered if I would be friends with my mom when she was a kid. My American voice would have told ask for more, but she had no American voice. She only had a Niña de un Pueblo voice, doing what Niñas de Pueblos did during her time. Wake up at 6 a.m. to make the masa for her siblings, then run to get to school on time. No American voice for her to tell her parents, no, ask Angel, he's older than me. My American voice always responding back, I must al rato, mami. I'll do it later. Doing nothing with my time, her doing more than enough for her siblings, her parents, herself. I now realize this is why my mom sees me as a stranger, because she's mostly heard my American voice. I think she expects a Mexican voice like hers. My American friends wouldn't get it though. She wouldn't, she would make my mom's life an agenda, a story to feel more passionate about her women's rights movement focused on only fighting for other American women than forgetting a few days later. I know, but she's my mom is all I say to her. Um, I'm not sure if I have enough, if I have more time, um, but the last one that I'll be reading is just called, um, traditions and this is one of my very first poems that I wrote in my youth um, tradition never put a plate for me at the dinner table tradition greeted everyone else at the party except for me I see the way tradition looks and smiles but I also see the disgust in their eyes when they do tradition uses my name for jokes without asking uses me for what not to do when all I'm doing is existing Tradition made everyone feel like my family. Strangers at the grocery store, the kid behind me in class, the family never made me feel good. Tradition makes me feel invited, but only because they had to, not because they wanted me there. I wish they wanted me there. And right when I feel like tradition and I are getting along, I'm blindsided by another joke and I want to scream. But what comes out is a laugh that joins the rest of the laughs. Laugh here, cry at home. That's my tradition. So yeah. Thank you guys and thank you Tint Journal for organizing this because I think it's pretty pretty cool to take poetry digital. So thank you and have a good day wherever or night wherever you are.